Hello and welcome back. Today's video is going to be a combination of a wish list and an anti haul. I'm going to talk about some makeup products. Most of them are new, but actually, some of them, especially the ones on my actual wish list, are kind of old on the market and have been around for at least a year, maybe a little bit more. I'm just gonna give you my thoughts, let you know why something is maybe on my wish list or I am anti hauling it. I have decided though, I'm not gonna buy makeup until April 1st because I got a lot already in January and February. Therefore, I need to take a break and just use the things that I have. But there are a few things that I am still lusting after, you know, mostly eyeshadow because that's my favorite makeup product. Ever. And if you're interested in this eye look, I did film it as a part of my review and demo for the ColourPop Mint to Be palette. It's beautiful, here it is. So yeah, if you want to see that, I will link it for you and let's just get into this video. All right, the first thing just came out and I would say this is more of a maybe. I don't know if I actually would get this, but it is the Urban Decay Wired palette and it is a very colorful palette, $39. And the main reason it's calling to me is that I always wanted that electric palette. People talked about it so much, but I didn't get it when it was out. At that time, I was not into very colorful eyeshadow, but now I am very into colorful eyeshadow. And this definitely interests me, but part of it is because I missed out on that palette. Therefore, I do wanna wait for reviews and see what people think, for this is definitely a maybe. The next item I definitely wanted when I first saw it, but now I can officially say I am anti-hauling the new Natasha Denona Love Palette and the Cheek Palette. The eyeshadow palette is $65, the Cheek Palette is $55. I did a video on my channel called My Version of the Love Palette and I kind of arranged some similar but kind of different shades within that color family and I really, really like that and I just think this palette is beautiful, but I can easily dupe it. And for $65, that's still pretty expensive. Not as much as some of her other palettes, but I want to be 100% in love with it. But it is beautiful. The cheek palette is also beautiful, but it's very shimmery. And the ones that would be more blushes on my skin tone have shimmer. One of them is a cream blush. I don't know. It does, just does not interest me, even though it does look very nice, but these two are definite anti-hauls for me. All right, the next one is probably also an anti-haul, and that is the new Norvina Mini Volume 3 Cherries palette. And this one is really colorful, really pretty. There's some blue, some green, some red. Um, and the reason I am anti-hauling this right now is because I just bought one of the other Norvina mini palettes. I'll be doing a haul within the next week. You'll see it's the one with the white packaging. I can't remember if that's the mini one or two. It's really beautiful. And because I just got that, I don't really think I need this one. Um, I'll talk about some Norvina Anastasia products later that are actually on my wish list. This is beautiful, but yeah, just because I bought that other mini, I don't need this one. This next one is really hard, but I am anti-hauling it, and that is the Midas Cosmetics and Smoky Glow palette, which is $36, and there's also a highlighter duo and lip glosses. I think the highlighter was $21. I love Hannah Smoky Glow. She is definitely one of my favorite bigger YouTubers. Um, I just, I love her content. I love her commentary videos, but I also love her makeup videos. I am really happy for her that she got this collab. And I do think the palette is beautiful. Pinks, I love pink eyeshadow. However, I'm anti-hauling it because A, I just bought a bunch of eyeshadow palettes, but also I don't know a lot about this brand. And I have tried quite a few indie brands and some I know a lot about from other people's reviews, but this one is not one I've seen a lot of people talk about. I'm sure it's great. And if you have tried it, let us know. However, I have other indie brands on my wish list, ones that I've kind of known more about, you know, and I've already done a lot of research into the products and whether I would like them. Therefore, for that reason, I'm going to skip out on this. It's also sold out anyway, but they are gonna do a restock probably in the next month, they said. But yeah, I couldn't get it anyway, but it is beautiful and I'm very happy for her. This next one is also an anti-haul. I'll get to the wish list, I swear, but this is something I really wanted at first when I heard about, and then I've kind of changed my mind, and that is the new rebrand of Makeup Geek. 
and the individual shadows are five dollars and 49 cents there's quads i think those are 15 dollars nine pan palettes are about 32 dollars and then you can get a big magnetic palette of a bunch of the eyeshadows for hundred and something dollars. I have some Makeup Geek shadows, you know, from the old branding when they were in the circle pans that I really like. And I do think that the quality is quite good on everything that I've tried from the brand. However, I decided, first of all, I tend to not really reach for single shadows very much. I definitely reach for palettes more than I do for single shadows. Plus, you know, there is some drama going on right now with the owner of Makeup Geek. I don't want to get into all of that. There's a lot of YouTube videos about it, but it's hard to know, you know, what's true, what's not true. But, you know, some of the things she's done have kind of put a bad taste in my mouth and not just now, kind of in the past, but I used to watch Marlena way back in the day when she started YouTube. And overall, I don't have anything against her, but I think combining the fact that I don't really reach for single shadows, with current drama hmm, makes me less interested in this. And I have Makeup Geek shadows that are really good. I have the, in the Nude palette. It's a fantastic palette. Honestly, I should just be using what I have instead of buying more stuff. All right, let's get into a wish list product. The Violet Voss Sweet Violet Palette. This is $18. This is one of their mini palettes. They came out with this one and then a larger palette for 30 something dollars that is neutral. I'm not interested in the neutral one. However, I love purples. I love colorful eyeshadows. The price is good. This is on my wish list because I have heard good reviews. I actually did have a mini Violet Voss palette. Mm, I think the Sorbet one. And I actually decluttered that last year because, or maybe even the year before, it wasn't that great. The quality wasn't terrible, but the shimmers were a bit chunky. However, the reviews on this one are quite good. Therefore, I definitely am considering it strongly. However, I do want to look in store and see if I can find one to swatch to see if at least it swatches better than the one that I had. But yeah, the price is right, the colors are beautiful, and I am interested in giving Violet Voss a second chance because that other palette was the only one I ever tried. You know, maybe they've improved their formula. That was, I think, over a year ago that I had that palette. All right, one more anti-haul, and the rest is wish list products. Anastasia Amrezi. This is beautiful. I love Anastasia as a brand. I love their formula, but... I'm saying what a lot of people have said about this palette is that it kind of looks like a combination of Soft Glam combined with Riviera and maybe one other of their palettes. I feel like I have these colors and it has two pressed glitters. I'm disappointed they went with that route. I've said many times I don't mind an eyeshadow that has glitter in it, but I don't like pressed glitters. I'm just not into that. Therefore, you know, I don't need this palette. However, there are some things from Anastasia that I do want. And the first one that is on my wish list for sure, which is kind of weird because this palette came out over a year ago or about a year ago, exactly, the Anastasia Riviera palette. This is so colorful and it's so beautiful and I really wanted it when it came out, but with my low buy last year, I just could not fit it in. And so many of you guys told me that it is at Marshalls and TJ Maxx. Well, I checked. My area, those Marshalls and TJ Maxx suck for makeup. They either have almost no makeup, and I went to one and they did have it, but of course, one of the eyeshadows was completely crushed and spread all over the palette. You know, I'm not gonna buy that. That just seemed crazy. Honestly, I considered it, which was insane. I'm glad I left it in the store, but yeah oh i can't believe it so many people have seen it in their store but yeah my area they're just i don't know i can't find it therefore i'm gonna wait it out see how i feel in the future and if i still want it you know what screw it i should just buy it at full price for 45 dollars because it's not that big of a deal you know if i really want something i should be able to get it at full price but yeah, unfortunately, I could not find it at Marshalls. Another Anastasia product that has been on my wish list again since last year, when these palettes came out, were one of the larger Norvina palettes. The two that I think are the prettier color stories to me is the Volume 1, which is the pinks and the purples, and the Volume 2, which is more green and blue, but has a few pink and purple shades as well. 
I mentioned I just got one of those smaller Norvina palettes. I'm gonna see how I like that first um, because if I'm not a huge fan of that formula, I've only used it once by the way, and I only used two of the eyeshadows. I liked it, but I haven't used it enough to really have legitimate thoughts on it. But I think if I like it, I may get one of those larger ones. Everyone raved about those and they said they are really, really high quality. You know, so hmm, it's tempting me. I love that brand overall, I do. And the problem is, is I wanna try new brands and I have tried a few new brands already this year, which is very exciting. However, you know, sometimes I prefer to go with something that I know is safe and that I am going to like, you know, therefore with, you know, instead of experimenting with something different, but yeah, one of those two, it's on my wish list, but they're expensive, $60. That's something I would definitely want to wait to get with um, Ulta 20% off coupon, which I did just have one of those, but I ended up not getting one. You'll see in the haul, but yeah. Next up is the Farsali Glass Skin. That is definitely on my wish list. I just tried my first Farsali product. I got the Skin Tune Primer, and I really enjoy it. And you know, I wanna get more use out of that one before I go ahead and run out and buy another primer, because I've gotten several new primers lately. But the glass skin is one that I've heard a lot of good reviews about. And now that I've tried Farsali and I like it, you know, this one is $54 full size. What annoys me is, so I bought a mini of the Skin Tune. They have minis of almost all of them at Sephora, but not the glass skin. They only have the glass skin in a full size. Crazy. I know. I kind of hate that. I wish they had them all in half size, but... That is for sure on my wish list. Maybe that's something I would get at a VIB sale. All right, last up is another, you know, old news wish list product, the Sydney Grace Enduring Love Palette. This came out, I think, beginning of January. It's sold out, but I think they're restocking in the next week or two. You can, they're on back order, so you can order it, and then they're gonna ship, I think, sometime in February. I've seen great reviews, and at the beginning of the year, I did a video, Brands I Want to Try in 2020, and I did list Sydney Grace on that list. I previously wanted to try their single eyeshadows, but now that they have a palette, again, I tend to reach for palettes more than my single eyeshadows, therefore, I really think I would use a palette more than if I got some of their single eyeshadows. I will see, though. Um, I'm going to wait. Maybe they'll release another palette. I want more. I don't think so, though. I mean, indie brands don't usually release things as fast as mainstream brands, but the palette is beautiful. I've heard great reviews. It is $52, so it's a little on the pricey side, but we shall see. This is definitely on my wish list. Plus, it's also a brand I really do want to try. Alrighty, that is it for this wish list and anti-haul video. I really don't want to buy things the second they come out. I do that sometimes, but actually very rarely because I want to actually think about my purchase and think, is this something I really need or want? Plus, that way you can also watch reviews and you know that also gives you an idea of whether you know it's a good thing to buy or not. Therefore, a lot of these newer items, well, I've already almost mostly talked myself out of them or I'm gonna wait for reviews like the Urban Decay one. So yeah, let us know. Do you have any of these products? Are you buying any of them? That is it, and thank you so much for watching.